There's a distillery sitting in ruin. That's the one down in Gethsemane. That's Mount Case Beans Distillery, old Trump sitting there. He decides to build across the street from it. He builds the Cold Spring Distillery, a new distillery. Now, what did the Cold Spring Distillery produce that was so important to the economics of the state of Kentucky? The number one selling bourbon. For quite some time, not just some time, three decades, one out of every three bottles of bourbon sold out in the state of Kentucky was Yellowstone. Bernard Dant, Cold Spring Distillery, had a salesperson on the staff, a guy like myself, went to Charles Townsend. Charles was coming through Wyoming in 1872. That'd be horseback. Took a minute to get back to Kentucky. When he got back, he had a buzz. Bernard, you got to name a bourbon after this park out west. It's getting worldwide attention. Been carried in a gift shop at Yellowstone National Park ever since, never to come off the shelf, even during prohibition, sold for medicinal purposes. Brilliant marketing by great uncle Bernard. Yellowstone was straight rye whiskey all the way back in the 1900s. What do we have here? Kentucky straight bourbon with 13% rye. A nod back to its past. And at 93 proof, some of the smoothest bourbon I've ever drank. What happens every time you go through a bottle of it? A percentage goes back to the National Parks Conservancy. Save all parks, drink more Yellowstone. Bottling proof in the industry is standing in front of you. That's not the fast. Forehead bottling. We got the Christmas present. Well, launch brand new sophisticated bottling line. Been like LaGuardia ever since. We run the national brands at night. During the day, we run the single barrels. This is a single barrel being bottled up right now. The juice that makes it there, 600 here, 150 there, 25 gallons of heart comes out. Two distillations later to get the 25 gallons of usable juice. Four distillations later to get the one barrel of bourbon. How many barrels of bourbon does this place make in a day? Pay for the vapors collected in the onion cap. When it fills the onion cap, it's going to be forced over this piece down into this condensing tower. Cold as ice. Water all the way up. So when the hot paper comes down the inside of that coil, hits the cold coil, snap a doodle, the magic happens. Comes off the still at 180 proof. And at 160 proof to 90 proof, you're going to get your 25 gallons of usable juice. And that's going to go here. Two distillations later, you'll have a full barrel. When that white dog gets that new charred American oak potato, what do you call it? Bourbon from day one. Yellowstone Select, that's it right there. Cold Spring Distillery down in Gethsemane, Kentucky. That's what it looked like when Bernard Dant was operating it and Charles Townsend rode in on horseback. Where Yellowstone Bourbon was originally created. It was 1872 that they named the distillery Yellowstone Distillery. They dropped the Cold Spring name off of it because they were selling so much Yellowstone Bourbon. You know how close it was for us to be called Cold Spring? This close. You know why we weren't? We got a branch, not a string. <laughs> 2019 limited edition, it's the single shits. A 9 and 12 year mingle. Only 10,500 bottles were produced. This is the last of the few bottles that we have left. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. It's a limited edition. One off. This is a unicorn. This is a single barrel. Like what you all are going to go to taste here shortly, this is a single barrel. Caitlin Jackson contacted me, said, I want to see how you do a tasting. I hear it's unlike any other tasting in the state of Kentucky. I said, it is. Won't you come down? We'll taste through some barrels. At the end of that barrel selection, she thought it was just going to be a mock barrel selection. I bottled it to Caitlin Jackson. Caitlin put us on the show Yellowstone with the commercial Yellowstone. So we have the Caitlin. And it's got a cherry finish on it like no other. Phenomenal cherry finish on the back end of this one. 115 proof on tickle your tonsils. <laughs> Prettiest bottle in the liquor industry she is. Look at those painted botanicals on the back. You flip it around, it's three-dimensional. That's gross top. They're going to buy this for the bottle. We're going to buy it again for the wonderful flavor profile. 17 different botanicals in Mr. Bean's New World Gym. That's more botanicals than Colonel Harlan Sanders had spices in his chicken recipe. Leave it to the bean, Colonel Bean. Rub on top of the bridge. The only Trump distillery down in Gethsemane, Kentucky. We stole it. You know who drank bourbon underneath it? Jim Bean did. Mine and Case Bean did. Guy Bean did. The entire Bean family since the 1800s been drinking bourbon underneath this tin. When we walk across this bridge, we're walking across the distilling history of the state of Kentucky. That's how cool the bridge is. <laughs> Thank you.
So what we have are samples of three different barrels. We have it in three different proofs. So what I'm going to do is set up my tasting book for exactly that. Three different barrel numbers, one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom. And then I'm going to put three different proofs underneath it. So the very first number of the first barrel, and this is sequential order, and that's just random. I just do it sequentially, the numbers on the barrels. One, eight, oh, five, two, eight, three. One, eight, oh, five, two, eight, three. And then underneath that number, I'm putting 102, space for tasting notes, 109, space for tasting notes, and 115. In the tea industry, we always started out with the lightest teas, the white teas, and we went to the darkest teas, the bergamots, and the things that were dark. So that's what we're going to kind of do here, only we're going to do it with fruit. We're going to start out with the 102s, and we're going to taste through all the 102s, and then write some notes down about what you think is good characteristics or bad characteristics. Call it the Fred Bennett. Guys, what do you think of the uh, 115? You want my opinion? I do. 115 at barrel number 283. All three picks that I chose were 283. Wonderful flavor on that barrel. Over and over again, it just got better and better. At 109, it picked up at 115 at launch. I loved it. I got all sorts of caramel popcorn. It was smooth. It had uh, a peppery finish. I really liked that first barrel. That was my choice. Nice highly spaced. Completely different. Completely different. And, and I go with a more of a smooth flavor profile that hits the majority of the crowd. The 12 year old wellers that have no distinct anything. They're just smooth. They don't pop in any real direction. He goes for the unicorn, something that has the most unique flavor. The yeah, I like wild something, I like something going on. I don't like it just yeah. It's yeah. the experience of finding out what fruit does to the actual barrel. Yeah. These are all Yellowstone barrels. These are all the different fruits. So, building has to be sprinkled when you have a bottling line. That's going to be expensive. Yep. That's all this week from the Cap and Cork Studios. We'll keep you in good spirits, and you keep us in good company. We'll see you right back here next week.